Edu, here we go. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Awesome. Okay. It was the first time we were able to actually hear the jingle while we were opening our podcast. Improvement. It was about about time, man. Like we don't have to imagine it in our head every single time. <laughs> and that was one of the goals we set for this podcast. Like each episode, we can improve a little, even though it's a very little improvement. We should have figured out sooner, but we improved. That counts. <laughs> There you go. We, we were able to jam together without faking it. Mm-hmm. Just like becoming better and more honest for our audience. God, what, what, wow. What a concept. That's amazing. <laughs> Edu, I hope you're doing well. I know you are doing well because you called me before and it sounded amazing. So how are you? <laughs> ah, I'm doing great, man. Just having a good time. Yesterday I had a concert with my kiddos. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm a music teacher and it was a good concert. Mm-hmm. And we sang songs from America. Uh, folk songs mm-hmm. you know and it was funny because i tried to do a southern accent because i was narrating mm-hmm. a story and for when we were singing oh susanna i tried to do what's your name and i was like my name's susanna and i'm from louisiana and like all the people were laughing at my fake south american accent which uh you know i think it's a really nice way to tie into the today's topic which is languages and how we mm-hmm. can be able to understand each other and how the cultural barrier works and how we also sometimes think in our own language. Uh, I got that question all the time. So it's going to be a super interesting topic. But first of all, I want to know, how are you doing, boss? Wow, what a great, great talk, Edu. I'm doing wonderful. I'm actually having a good time, even though it's been a busy period, but I've been recording lots of Symbolum, which is something that I really enjoy. But I always like think, okay, it's going to take me just 10 minutes. And then I spend like three hours recording <laughs> one song. Like, okay, I should probably stop because there are so many other things. But that makes me feel very happy. And this is also tied to the topic because music, you know, as a universal language, as we always mentioned. So today I also yeah. got to experience it when I was practicing music and recording the music. This music was for the reason of telling a story. So literally I was using my music to tell a story that I want to share with the audience. So music as a language, what a great way to start our podcast. And I want to just yeah, do man. a small piggyback when you start talking about like we're trying to be real on this podcast and kind of spontaneous. So we were thinking, okay, should we prepare for today's podcast, like today's topic languages? Should we like look up something cool or should we just keep it like, okay, this is going to be a genuine conversation. And we did not do it. We did not look it up. And we were just trying to share what we feel like about languages because we feel that languages changed our lives completely. So let's, let's go for it. Edu, like how many languages can you speak or how was it for you to realize that you can speak different languages? Yeah, man. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, my main language is Spanish because I'm from South America. Mm-hmm. And I think something very interesting is that people always think like, oh, you speak Spanish, therefore, like, you eat tacos for breakfast. It's just such an assumption. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still get asked, uh, oh, so, like, do you celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Like, May 5th, is that your Independence Day? And it's like, no, bro, it's not even a, an actual festivity is just mm-hmm. an excuse that american companies made to make you drink booze on, on may 5th <laughs> uh, margarita time <laughs> for real it's, it just represents that mexico won a battle but mm-hmm. it's funny how th- people think that because of your language you behave in a certain way it's mm-hmm. just like for example like if uh, y- you tell people hey i speak french people think you are from the French, from France, right? Mm-hmm. But there's so many African countries that speak French as their main language. So like that, that cultural bias, like mm-hmm. or like, I don't know if you if you know what I'm saying. Like so many different countries speak so many languages, and we already mm-hmm. assume like because they speak a certain language, they have to behave a certain way. Mm-hmm. Uh, having said that, I, having said that, I speak Spanish, I speak English, I speak Portuguese, sort of. Uh, it's mm-hmm. so similar to Spanish and. Some of my family lives in Brazil. So when I Ooh, went to Brazil a couple carnival. of times. Yeah. <laughs> carnival. It sounds like carnival, bro. Like oh, it's, yeah. it's car- carnaval. <laughs> carnaval, carnaval. Let me learn, man. I need to learn. <laughs> carnaval, yeah, yeah. And um, I was learning a little bit of Chinese uh, mm. so I could go to China. 
and of course i can i can say any swear word you want in any language of the world because that's the only thing i cared about learning when i met somebody from a different country <laughs> one of amazing impression or memory i have with edu we once were partying after our university time with international students and they were koreans and it was like one of my first times being together with edu like outside and enjoying our time together and all of a sudden edu stars like cussing in korean like oh and talking to korean students i'm like wow what the heck how was he able to do that so yeah and when you talk about your cussing abilities in different languages i haven't confirmed for real from this funny story i'll never forget it people people are surprised by like how the hell do you know that you know that's that's what i'm saying it's just like why why like how do you know that and and always the, cool. always what the about bad you? words <laughs> Always, you have to impress, man. You learn to impress. What about you? What languages do you speak, Mati? So my native language is Czech, Czechy Azik, which is a very interesting language that I still like. But then I started learning English in order to go to America. But I actually started learning English much more before I have ever even thought about America, because it was required ever since from my third grade. You know, now schools in Czech, all of them start from the first grade, or some of them even from the kindergarten, which I think it's awesome, and I would really appreciate it. But at my time, I went to a language school. And the language school was specific that we started in third grade already at that time. So I guess it mm -hmm. helped me in a way that I was ahead of like average students in a Czech because we had a very cool language teachers. But the first time when I came here, I realized, oh my gosh, my English is not as good as I thought. So English, I developed mm -hmm. English because of studying here, obviously. And then I also learned Chinese when I was in my school. And in my high school, I was also required to study French, but it would be a big overstatement to say that I can speak French. I, I know also some of the yeah. bad words, some of the nice words, but very simple sentences. And recently I've been learning Spanish, <laughs> which is fun, right? Uh, hey, hey, what, what was the first thing you learned in Spanish? All the bad words, right? Oh, I don't want to say it here. <laughs> <laughs> who, no, but who was your teacher? Oh, of course, Eduardo. <laughs> I even I even taught Mati how to flip his R. Edu Arado, Eduardo. Arado, Eduardo, Eduardo. Yeah, Reyes, yeah. Reyes, Ortiz, Ortiz. <laughs> Ortiz. Yeah, man. Some people would call me Reyes Ortiz. Speaking of languages, mm -hmm. you know what? What I find it fascinating how like um, only in Europe and in Africa is the place where you find so many languages in a certain piece of land mm -hmm. you know like in europe is like it's, europe is so small but every country has its own language mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. much and in africa many mm -hmm. countries also speak their own language but then you go to china the whole country speaks yeah they can speak cantonese or mandarin yeah but mm -hmm. it, it's very similar uh when you go to the north america canada mm -hmm. uh and the united states speaks english and french mm -hmm. and then all latin america but brazil and a couple of other countries mm -hmm. speak spanish and it's funny to think about that because it all comes from latin apparently right okay. like we, we don't know we always have different languages like uh sumerian sumerian um man i forgot all of those all ancient languages but considering that all comes from latin why do you think is that Europe has a different language? And it's not like words that are similar, are completely different words and like completely different grammatical rules within the same land. That's a good question. Do you happen, like, I do happen should... to know that? I, I don't happen to know. I wish I know. That sounds like a very good historical question. But it also it's very mind blowing because if you think that Europe is pretty much like United States, when it comes to the states in America, that's pretty much the, the countries in Europe, right? Like they are close to each other. They are relatively small. So all of them speak so many different kinds of languages, not many kinds, but like different languages, just like across borders. Mm -hmm. So it will, it will take me three hours each direction to reach different country. And in each of them, I can hear completely different language. And it's like, what the heck, how would it happen? Because like, what gives yeah. the border so strong that people will keep their language within the border? And it's like, okay, that's probably the culture and how it works. So that's just cool to think about. You would assume that Europe by, by this time uh, would have a unified language, right? Like, I don't know, English or like, mm -hmm. what is the most? I think German is, is a, a language that is spoken in a lot of parts of Europe, in Austria, in Germany, in uh, a parts of Switzerland, hopefully. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm, I'm messing it up. 
but I don't know. You would think that they would have solved that problem, right? And mm-hmm. but what what really blows my mind is that in Europe we we are so like yeah I can speak Spanish I can speak English like mm-hmm. in all Latin America if you speak English you're like wow bro I admire you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but in Europe people speak like. 10 languages easy yeah. it's just like yeah i speak german spanish french polish czech and a little bit of russian and you're like mm-hmm. w- how why mm-hmm. but because yeah the education and because of the fact that the countries are so close to each other so that would be a reason so you know you have to study different languages at the school but it's also easy to travel to the country so if you live near the borders you can maybe find even work opportunities so some people like okay if i keep mm-hmm. learning german or French, I might find some extra opportunities. So some people do it, but actually, yes, you said like unified language, but we are super fortunate. And actually I'm being very grateful for that these days that we can both speak speak English and we can comprehend, we can understand deeply what's going on and we don't have this barrier anymore because you know, English is that universal language even within Europe because many of those European people have very sufficient English level to communicate. So if you know English, it's so mind blowing, but you have access to pretty much most of the information that exists in this world. If you, of in course, world, don't kind yeah. for example, like the, the Chinese style, but still even in China will use the vast of English information as well, which is like, wow. Well, so that I'm very grateful that we can do it and we can improve, you know, our English, we always do mistakes. Like, for example, today I was texting with my friend in China and he was like, hey, today I learned this kind of word, this kind of word. And he sent me one word and I realized I understood this word, word like wrong for so many years. So like, okay, I maybe should still spend some time on studying English so I can have a proper understanding of the word so that I don't sound like potato. <laughs> how was your experience yeah. with English? When you came here, how was it for you to figure it out? Did you understand? Were you able to communicate? You know, I, um, I was lucky enough or maybe cursed because when I was younger, my dad put me in an English private institute mm-hmm. where my day finished at 5.30 p.m. every single day because I was in a fine arts high school, right? Mm-hmm. So my day started at 8 a.m., finished at 5.30 p.m. I stayed at school the whole day. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I had to go to English private school from 6 mm-hmm. p.m. to 8 p.m. So that I was like that for two years when I was in seventh, mm-hmm. eighth, no, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So it was, it was it was hard. And I hated the fact that I had to do all of that extra work. But then mm-hmm. when I when I had the opportunity of living in my country and I went to China in, in my senior year of high school, mm-hmm. And I was able to communicate with all the people from around the world. I was just so grateful with my dad. And it was the moment that clicked, you know, like it's so important to learn a second language. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people, um, well, not targeting anybody, but a lot of people think that just knowing English is sufficient. Uh, But especially if you live in the United States, it's so more and more and more important to know a secondary language. In this Mm -hmm. case, I would say it's very important to know Spanish. Like Mm -hmm. you have so many Hispanics in the United States that Mm -hmm. um, a lot of places are hiring, not based on experience, but based on the ability to effectively communicate with uh, more than one racial group, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or a lot of people are hiring people that can speak Swahili from Somalia mm-hmm. or um, what is the other one that we have a lot over here? Karen, Karen from like Thailand mm-hmm. or uh, it's it's crazy. So like I, I, I say that's a great thing mm-hmm. that if I have if I have friends, I would definitely encourage them to learn a second language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because, oh, 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 I'm going to let you talk here and I would love you to expand on this. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. isn't it true that once you learn a second language, it's so much easier to learn more languages because you have a, a process of learning mm-hmm. and you can actually understand it. How about you speak about your learning Chinese when you were 24 years old? Yeah, wow, wow. So many cool things you mentioned and a very good question. I feel like absolutely what you said, you know, when you once you learn one language, you realize, oh, I understand the processes a little bit more. I understand how I study as well, how I work and how I learn this language so I can apply my experience to learn different language. But again, it's also amazing power of English, because if you use English to access other languages, again, you get the most resources that exist. And if you really spend your time 
improving your learning methods, how you learn the language, then you can access the best resources to learn that certain language. So I was super fortunate, you know, for internet, for English knowledge. So I could actually learn Chinese completely in English, which was so much fun. And also that helped me improve oh. my English as well. Like I deepened understanding of my English. And I think it was it was pretty pretty beneficial because I was watching the YouTube videos and you know Chinese language is actually very commonly speak in the world. It's like the most spoken language when it comes to the original population, right? But even mm -hmm. because of that, there's lots of business potential. So many people on YouTube, they make videos. Hey, do you want to learn Chinese? This is the best method. And those videos maybe have like 800,000 views. So there is some like interesting interest in learning Chinese. And I used all of that together with, you know, always improving these methods by trying to apply scientific approaches and exactly like experiences of others. And then always getting feedback from the people from China. Hey, you shouldn't say this. You should say that and blah, blah, blah. Then I could finally learn Chinese. And it was so much fun. And I'm, you know, I have to stop. My Chinese is not, you know, it's not anything amazing. It sounds like, oh my gosh, I can speak flawless Chinese. But my Chinese has many flaws. But I accepted that I'm willing to learn through these flaws and I'm trying to improve them as I go. And hopefully one day I'll be able to have like a good speech in front of like Chinese audience telling my story about the symbol, about all these things that we actually talk in the podcast, but in Chinese. Mm -hmm. So learning one language absolutely think... improves it. And this was super exciting, especially with English. Do you think it's, it's true? Uh, the myth that people say I don't know if it's myth is the correct word but there's the assumption that people say that once you get older it's harder mm -hmm. to learn a language do you think it's true or not hmm. uh, I, it's, it's a very good question uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I, I think it's based on like personal belief whether I can learn in the first place it doesn't have to be language just anything just accepting that, okay, I can learn if I put my attention to it. Of course, when you're older, you know, your brain forgets quickly and works differently. So there might be some hinders, some barriers for your learning, but I would love to believe, and this is my personal belief. I think you can always learn if you try and accept it. So I hope I'll be able to say the same, th same thing like 50 years later when we meet, I do. So I hope, but this is my belief. How about you? What do you think? Are we going to live 50 more years? Do you think we're going to live 50 more years? Okay, that's what I also believe. Actually, I've been listening. Okay, speaking of podcasts, in a podcast, I've been listening to a podcast uh, from Andrew Huber Huberman, and he's like this neuroscientist, and he always shares like tips about how to improve some aspects of your life, especially from the you know like medical point of view, physical and uh, scientific point of view. And he had a guest uh, that was exactly talking about it. You know, so that was that was pretty cool. <laughs> So like the guest was saying that humans are going to increase their lifespan or we're reducing exactly. our lifespan. He was, he was saying that we are living longer and it's actually important to set your final decade that you want to live up to. For example, I know my final decade of my life will be between the age of 80 to 90. And then that's what, how you can adjust your life in order to really get to that place and be able to still huh. function, not only be like old and, you know, tired and unfunctional, but also be okay at that age. And it's possible because first of all, it's increasing, you know, all the science, all the things that we've been doing, the mortality rate is also going down and the age of our death is increasing. So yeah, those, that's pretty cool. Just to realize, okay, I really want to live 50 years later from now and I want to be healthy and I'll be grateful for that. It'll be interesting to see how all the technological boom affects all of that though. Because like, I don't know, we didn't have cell phones that were in our pockets 24 seven, like 10 years ago, or we didn't have all of this 5G, 4G, all of this radiation going. I'm not saying um, I'm like against it. I think it's phenomenal. I'm so grateful for all this, but it'll be interesting. Maybe we can talk about like, that can be a great topic for our next podcast. Uh, maybe just like questions that are uncomfortable to think about. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good topic. It's just mm -hmm. like, I don't know, just navigate how we see things. But coming mm -hmm. back to the topic of languages, <laughs> this ladies and gentlemen proves the fact that English, like Matthias said, is such an important tool. We were able to speak about a deep subject such as lifespan, mortality, and what else did you talk about? Research of neuroscience mm -hmm. uh, from a person that speaks Spanish and Czech. Like, 
-hmm. it's important to know languages because it allows you to communicate connect and expand your knowledge and yes the ideal goal would be to to learn more languages so you can connect mm -hmm. deeply with more people right absolutely and you know there are so many like kind of cliches like why is it good to learn languages but literally you will experience all those things that are normally commonly being said like you will deepen your cultural understanding of course because you spend time understanding the language that is based on different principles and people will be helping you oh we we do it like this because like this and this is what we say so you understand the culture better you're able to like increase empathy you know because you have to focus on details and always repeat it all the time and all the time and you have to accept that oh my gosh i'm doing so many mistakes and it's okay to do mm -hmm. them so i can learn so wow learning languages i think is one of the best things that 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 we can have as a human when it comes to our like intellectual fulfillment well i think one of the coolest benefits of learning a language is that you become not necessarily let's say when i was when because you mm -hmm. and i speak english we don't necessarily speak english but we speak world language Mm -hmm. which is funny because you can understand any person that tries to speak English based on the context and they can say something that's grammatically incorrect. Mm -hmm. But because you have taken the experience of learning a second language, you can understand that person, right? Mm -hmm. Like put the example of Lu Hao, our great friend mm -hmm. from China. He spoke with so many grammatical mistakes or maybe he didn't say the words that were correct at the moment. Mm -hmm. His English mm -hmm. is so good right now. It's, it's because he's dedicated to practice. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were able to understand to him because we went through the path of learning English versus a lot of American people uh, didn't understand him because they didn't learn a secondary we, language. I, I was they like, I couldn't understand how come they can understand. It was so obvious what he's trying to say because we had this experience, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's thing. That's amazing, right? Like because of that, we were able to hang out with so many cool international students, right, Edu? And, mm -hmm. and we were able to understand each other because we speak mm -hmm. world language. English happens to be the, the way to communicate, but oh. we spoke based on the context, right? It's just like, oh man, I am, I am so man. I, I, my English is good right now. Let me let me make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I thirsty English. need water. I thirsty need water. <laughs> me swimming pool day long, all day hot hot, like. <laughs> Yeah, like a lot of people will be like, what the hell did you just say? But like, because we were in, in the path, we, we can imagine, we can complete all the phrases, <laughs> fill in all, all the gaps. I was like, oh, you have been swimming all day long in a very hot swimming pool. So you want some water, right? And like, yes, 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 shui, shui, xie, 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 right? <laughs> and, then, and that is, kids, how you can improve your ability to focus and your attention through learning languages. <laughs> awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. You know, and, and I think this n leads nicely into a transition. What do you mm -hmm. think is the best way, realistically, that you could get in, exposed to a new language? Like, do you, th do you believe in the approach of using Duolingo? Do you believe in the approach of doing the scientific research like you did and just learning with your own learning improved method? Or do you think the best way to learn a language is by saying, heck it, I'm going to travel to a country that I have never been in my life mm -hmm. and I'm just going to force myself to learn that language. Mm -hmm. You know what is amazing about what you just said? All of these things can be applied and it can work. It depends like what is your style and how you want to learn. So like the experience that maybe I'll share is really subjective and my, my unique one. This is what works for me, but doesn't mean it works for others. But if you combine all those things together, then you can actually examine which one works for you and which one not. So you you do Duolingo, it's like, okay, I did lots of hours on Duolingo, but I feel like I cannot speak language. Maybe I should update my learning abilities so I can actually learn more efficiently. And it's, of course, it's harder at the beginning, like, oh my gosh, I should have stayed with Duolingo because I'm spending more time and energy right now on it. But then again, you're learning by the experience and more experienced you are, the faster you can comprehend, the faster you can get it and retain it for the future, which is, which is awesome. So don't be afraid to experiment try watching youtube videos try traveling to country if you can which is awesome try to talk with native speakers you know online you can have group chats with speakers there are some people who are learning that they go to like a oh. spanish group chat and they say hola and the person replies hola back and then the person who replied hola says 
uh, como estas? And the first guy, he put como estas to translator. Oh, this is how are you? Okay, now I know how to say how are you. So I'll reply com, como, es, como estas back, you know? So wow. they, you, there's so many ways and just be creative. Use advantage of our current day and time, like a technology, internet, all of that is amazing. The power of the science behind it just skyrocket everything. So how is, how is your approach? How do you think would be the ideal way according to your experience to learn language oh man uh i think for me works a lot of repetition mm -hmm. and scenarios right just like like putting yourself in the context just uh trying to analyze how in what situation would you employ a certain word like i believe that learning all the basics of a language is just pointless um for example yes it's necessary but if you say hi hello how are you how's your day going oh it's going good how is your day going mm -hmm. like that's just a waste of time it becomes right? old after you a while becomes old you get tired of the language and you feel like you're very inefficient mm -hmm. but now versus what happens when you apply it to a real scenario like for example when you apply it to your interests right mm -hmm. like uh you learn how to say i love music mm -hmm. in another language that's such a useful thing a meaningful thing for you that you're going to retain way faster and that would allow you to engaging more connections in your brain and learn different words mm -hmm. and different phrases um this is really interesting which i would be more curious to do more research on the science mm -hmm. of learning languages and what the science says about how what is the, the most efficient way to approach connections mm -hmm. in our brain mm -hmm. and, and all of that man when we first started mentioning books in the first episode this is the perfect time to do it again book called ultra learning by, by scott young it's incredibly mm -hmm. amazing it's about how you improve your ability to learn how you apply different methods in order to be a better learner faster efficient but the reason why the author wrote it was because he traveled to four different countries within one year and he learned fluently four different languages within that year like in wow. different continents he went to china south korea i think brazil i would be kidding but like those languages are actually like you know very different and he was They're able, opposites, he was able yeah. to do it because of the super crazy approach and then he wrote the book about it and they backed it up with scientific research so like oh my gosh if i spent let's say i i study for something for an exam five days and if i spend one of the day just improving how i study eventually like my ability to study and the way i can call recall the information will be at a different place and it was like that's super cool so scott young ultra learning one of the best books about learning anything especially languages you know what i i i am mesmerized by all the people we're talking about being brave <laughs> right and <laughs> just going for it no you don't necessarily have to go travel to a different country to be able to learn the language but like what you did like I remember you told me I learned English by watching Netflix without subtitles mm. and like by doing those interactions of doing something you actually care about. Like I know so many people that learn Spanish by watching telenovelas. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like you'll be surprised mm -hmm. and people like to watch soap opera style drama mm -hmm. and that's how they are able to catch on the languages. Um, Absolutely. And so many people that like, yeah, yeah with the subtitles, yes. right? Start catching mm -hmm. the context. But it's amazing because they have it connected with something they enjoy so they enjoy watching telenovelas so they will switch it to the language and the input will be already easier for them because they'll be excited to watch the telenovela no matter what so by the way they will acquire some new words right for example i was l mm -hmm. always watching lots of chinese recipes because i love food and i love cooking and i discovered the chinese food is amazing for both for eating and for cooking so i've been looking up so many different recipes and they always speak chinese it's like wow okay i can easily learn how to say onion how to say potato because they always say that and how to say chop how to prepare everything and that uh -huh. how i improved on top of that so something enjoyable if you add hard work with enjoyment i think it can lead into something good <laughs> well how do you think yeah dude i i remember when you ordered food in the we had a, a, a restaurant in our college town called international kitchen and it's a cantonese lady if i'm not mistaken she's uh, from hong that, kong I think. yeah from hong kong mm -hmm. and she she has probably one of the it's american chinese food but it was very 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 good and I remember the one time you started ordering your food in Chinese, she lost her mind. She was like, wow, why do you know so much? 
And then Mati froze. I was like, uh, uh, I just know about food. <laughs> I don't know about anything else, really. <laughs> and it was funny. It was a great experience, man. It was awesome. I was stuck. But by the way, if she's watching, <laughs> listening, hello, 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 ni hao, ni hao. <laughs> Because actually, she she liked one of our episodes before. So maybe she's listening. So No way. Yes, yes. So that would be fun. She's a very nice lady. Oh. And it was so much fun. I was kind of scared that she will ask me questions because I was ready to say noodles, rice, and I ordered so much food and I didn't need it. I just wanted to practice the Chinese. <laughs> so, yes. Pick. Pick, right? That, that, that's <laughs> yeah. what she goes by. Her American name, Pick. Pick. Edu, how is, Pick. what is your best memory about learning languages or about using different languages or your favorite language memory in general? Mm. I remember when I was in the English school, mm -hmm. um, they always told me, did you have your dream yet? And like, apparently they meant that you need to have your dream of yourself when you have a dream in another language. Mm -hmm. So I always tr tried to remember my dreams, but my dreams were so random that I never <laughs> actually used my, my uh, language. Mm -hmm. But uh, the my coolest memory and my coolest thing like uh of of languages is like i told you when i was in high school and i went to the chinese bridge competition mm -hmm. i didn't feel any barrier and i felt like the world was at my reach mm -hmm. i had 80 uh, 84 countries four people from 84 different countries mm -hmm. it was about 500 600 people my age like awesome. 17 16 to 18 We were all in a hotel room, in a in, not hotel room, ooh, in a in a five star hotel in Beijing, mm -hmm. and at breakfast I just went downstairs and I I took a deep breath like, okay, um, I will survive today. <laughs> where no, it it was literally like choosing where do I want to travel today, like what countries oh. do I want to be exposed today. And I was like, I'm gonna try Grenada. Mm -hmm. I went to Grenada. I started speaking with the girls from Grenada. I learned about their their culture. They gave me one Grenada uh, currency. I forgot the name. Okay. The next day, I was like, okay, Germany. So I started speaking with the German people. Uh, okay, uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. I started making friends with Russian people. Privet, Katschila, Harasho, Spasiva. I dude, I, it was just like mesmerizing. And then. I asked them to to teach me, of course, all the bad words of their languages, mm -hmm. and that's how I know so much mm -hmm. uh, cursing things. But yeah, just realizing that you can literally connect with the world mm -hmm. if you learn languages, uh, that was my best realization. Uh, What about you, bro? That's exactly, you know, I would say the same thing, because that will be also confirmed through our podcast. We have so many international friends, and we already contacted a few of them. Hey, would you like to join our podcast? We would love to talk about your international experience about your life and about your unique story again you know this is what languages brought us and what this amazing experience enriched our life by so that's that's so cool i remember the story you told me and i think it's a very very good one and very cool to be proud of because not everyone would be brave enough to go to sit with different people so i think kudos to you that you were actually pushing it okay i have the opportunity because you know the luck is based on how you take opportunities We're all lucky but some people just don't take the opportunities that they possibly could so you had opportunities to go to so many different countries and you could either be scared and go to the same one every day or like okay i will try to enrich and i will try to push it and go to a different one so this is great i would say confirmation that languages are super powerful and it helps us all to right, be more cool, brave bro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact i this is my favorite thing in the world it's mm -hmm. in my home country I, i didn't want to take it to america because it made me cry every time i saw it but oh. uh every time i met with somebody from a different country i had a notebook and i told them draw me something traditional from your country mm -hmm. and like i have drawings from all over the world uh oh. and as a matter of fact when i when i i just re remember that the sheet that says czech republic mm -hmm. has the mall the czech mall mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't know how, what's his name Kertecek, like Kertecek. Uh, Kertek, uh -huh. and like the the beer, you have the beer, the 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 thing that you slap on the table. It has the Czech mold, yes, and it it has another phrase in Czech. Uh, oh, it says pra, pra, Praha, Praha in Czech oh. as well. So it's like even before knowing you, I already mm. knew about Czech. I already knew about uh, a couple of words in Czech, and it's because English allowed me to connect into other languages, mm. which I think is so neat. The thing you said, you can literally learn one language in a 
a secondary language. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the craziest thing in the world? <laughs> it's just like <laughs> boom. <boof. laughs> And, and you know it also impresses me like every time we talk like i feel like we always discover more things that we have in common and i am super grateful that we can be friends and we can keep doing this together you know it's actually a seventh episode and together w- together as we have we're saying hi to our <laughs> friend Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so together so it's amazing you know even the china aspect you know the traveling aspect you know different oh just amazing music of course and all the stories that we showed over the time so i think it would be perfect time for us to end this episode and uh, just yep. to sum it up so if you learn languages you can absolutely change and enrich your life you can become much more empathetic much more curious much more focused individual who will have a better understanding of what's going on and who will have a better understanding of others which i think is one of the most important things we should value for our future so how about you? learning languages learning languages is not a oh no the iphone storage is full oh so again your picture used to recording the logic i no, yeah, yeah, but like I have 35 minutes of, of video, which is great. Awesome. It's not a big deal. Just awesome. let me erase one more video. Okay. It's it, I was just like teaching and I, I recorded one of my lessons because I wanted to assess uh, my teaching style. Mm-hmm. And apparently I recorded my lesson in 4K, which is unnecessary. <laughs> so here you can actually guys see how is Ed using everything in her class like actually recording videos in 4k for a classroom is pretty cool you know that's pretty cool not every teacher would would sacrifice the storage for it honestly what the heck you do not have storage because when you delete something from the iphone it keeps it in the trash folder for a bit i think oh no no i already accessed recently deleted um manage should we cut it or should we keep it going no, I keep it going. Okay, okay, because I was thinking we're oh gonna win gosh. this thing, Mati. So right we're now, gonna probably there's gonna be Edu's picture again. Edu, you have to send me some funny picture, okay? Because you messed it up. You're gonna no, 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 no. I prank on you, man. <laughs> I think you should just uh, capture any funny moment you can find of this podcast right now, like where I have a funny, f- funny face, and you just keep it going forever. <laughs> yeah or like you maybe like a small sequence of you like moving some funny way or saying something funny and it can go on repeat and repeat and repeat until you figure it out (laughs) just like yeah (laughs) like three faces over and over man i just i i swear i i Mm erase like a bazillion archives right now but it for some reason it's still okay okay Mm -hmm. let me try it let's try Maybe now, ladies and gentlemen, there is a little bit of tension. Drum roll. It doesn't work. Okay, that's not a drum roll. I know, that was like Wagner. <laughs> yeah, like the Valkyrie, Valkyries, whatever. Okay, bro, I think I think just with, with Edu's face over here. Sorry, okay. guys. So, Edu, what are your par- be able to see my words smile. for languages? How do you think? What, how would you sum it up? Don't be daunted by learning a new language. It's not a a sacrifice, but rather should be a process of enjoyment and fulfillment. Where if you do, if you approach it in a way uh, of something that you really enjoy doing, mm-hmm. it's gonna be awesome. You should learn a second language absolutely to connect with the world. And maybe this is just a little spoiler, uh, but hopefully. Mati and I will be able to do a podcast episode where we are literally going to be saying words in another language because we might travel to a country together mm-hmm. and Pretty record soon. a podcast episode in that country. With uh, different people. I already have many uh, in my mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's going to be an, an, an amazing thing. And, and yes, if you learn a second language, you can meet and develop a friendship with a guy from Bolivia and Czech Republic, uh, travel to different countries, have different experiences and enjoy the best parts of a life that you never thought you would be able to do. And all those memories it creates, guys, believe us, but you will carry them for the rest of your life. Like, it's amazing. I, If I recall mm-hmm. these memories, my day gets brighter, more happier. Like, they're so powerful to have them. So I'm grateful. Edu, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful episode. It's been a pleasure to listen and share all of our experiences and expand our horizons again and before we i want to hear a jingle again 
let's i i get the jingle ready but before we part i think it's also a good time to say some numbers you know because actually we have reached 100 listeners which is pretty cool oh you no know way. if you imagine 100 people sitting in a hall that's quite a lot of people like i would be happy to have them at my concert to be honest so thank you so much for listening to us if you find it anytime interesting funny or whatever and you appreciate the time spent with us please give us more loyalty by sharing our podcast by telling the word word of mouth is very powerful just by telling to your friends and we'll be very happy to get to more listeners and thank you so much it's been so much fun we're learning we're improving and we're both very grateful for that yes man thank you so much you awesome 100 you made our heart you make our hearts happy and we're really grateful for all of you we are we are so have a good time and see you again bye bye